Oh my goodness, look what I found. These are these are gorgeous. I can't believe this. Okay, these are these are coming home with me. Okay, in the end, these are the ones I decided to go with. I thought they were fabulous. Stylish. I was kind of expecting like unicorns and ice cream cones. And I'm not sure what I would have done with that. Uh, but these, these will work. So let's get it going. For this DIY, you're going to need your fabric, some thin pieces of square wood, some chalk paint. I went with classic gold and paper fasteners. You're going to want to take those paper fasteners and just paint a little bit of that gold paint on it. This is totally optional, but I just, I felt like the original color was just too brassy for the the finished look so paint those and i find it easier to hold onto the handles and then just simply using a pair of scissors snipping them off so that all you're left with are the perfect little circles and then i take these and push them down on the i just used the square piece of wood that i'll be using for the coasters just to flatten any of the sharp bits at the end now again totally optional but i decided to paint the edges of each of the little wood pieces with a little bit of that classic gold and just to tie it into the grommets or i should say the fasteners and just to make it look cohesive and then i went an extra step and again optional because this is facing the table but uh, i also painted the back now for this step if you're using a lighter more see-through cloth i recommend that you paint the wood white first and let that dry i just use some acrylic white paint. This fabric here is a bit thicker as you can see so that wouldn't be necessary to do that but later on you'll see I use a, a, a thinner material and painting it white just makes a big difference. So I just used my roller cutter and cut out the squares and then added some decoupage to the painted squares. If you're not painting your squares first um, you can just use the decoupage and you can see here this is the thinner cloth I was talking about and the white just really lets you see the fabric and, and none of the wood color peeps through. Getting it as straight as possible. The lines on the fabric here I was trying to get as straight as possible. And then just smooth that down with your fingers over the decoupage and just pushing it down, pressing it down with your fingers. And I used um, my Cricut scraper just to get all the little wrinkles and bits out. Okay, now this is the fun part. <laughs> I found these stencils at Dollar Tree. They are fabulous. They are gorgeous. Um, and so just using a little bit of Art Minds chalk paint in white and a stenciling brush, I dappled the chalk paint onto the stencils. I used a, a really tiny brush for this because the detailing on these stencils are really fine and I didn't want any smudging. Now you could decoupage your cloth first and then do this step, but I would actually recommend you do it the other way around, even though I know it can prevent bleeding. And that's just because if you put it over top and when you use it as a coaster, which I have done, and it actually worked really well, but if you put like a really wet glass on top of it, it and you decoupage over top, it won't bleed. Now take those fasteners, adhere one at each corner. With this step, I, I just find it, it just finishes it off really nicely and just makes it look um, thought through. And there you go. Again, you could do this before you did the grommets. I didn't. <laughs> um, I was kind of just thinking this one as I went. I, I, I had a, a basic plan in my head, but I wasn't quite sure what steps I was going to take. So um, if you're gonna follow this, I'd probably do it beforehand. For this DIY, you're going to need a Dollar Tree hula hoop and those crafter squares. You're going to want to take your pair of scissors and cut those crafter squares into long strips. You're going to want to cut it the lengthwise because you're going to want those pieces of cloth to be as long as possible. And you can cut the widths to be varied. So you can have thicker, wider ones, thinner, skinnier ones. It's up to you. I wouldn't make them too skinny though. Once you've cut all your strips, set them aside and then grab some thick twine rope and your hot glue gun and you're just going to adhere that twine to the hula hoop 
To begin with, you're going to want to use a few dollops of hot glue to make sure that it's adhered properly and it's not moving about. And you're going to want to make sure that you're doing that twine really tightly close together because you're not going to want the hula hoop color underneath to show through. And then once you've got that started and adhered quite well, you just start wrapping around, just wrap and wrap and wrap. <laughs> it actually goes a lot, a lot faster than you would think um, once you, you get that going. Now as you're nearing the end of the hula hoop and you're going to meet the side that you started with, you're going to want to start putting a few dollops of that hot glue on again just to make sure that everything stays in place. Once you get near the end, you want to tuck that in as tightly as possible, again using a few bits of hot glue to keep it secured and then just snip off the ends. You might need to tuck the ends in but a little bit of hot glue and a paint stick will do you fine. Okay, now we're going to attach our fabric strips to the twine wrapped hula hoop. So you're going to put it over top, fold it over, flip the long tail up, mm. then grab your the little tail and your hot glue gun and secure that into place. You might need to use a couple of dollops of hot glue. This is to mimic a longer cloth because the crafter squares are so short you can't tie them. So again, you just put it over, fold this shorter end across to make sort of the, or the tie part, I should say. Flip up the long part, grab your hot glue gun, and fasten down that shorter end of fabric. And then in the end, it looks like you used long pieces of fabric to tie into place, but really, you cheated. And then just fluffing that up to make it look nice and full and thick. And you want to keep doing this until you reach on both sides of the hula hoop about halfway up, making sure that you're mixing up the different types of colors of fabric and patterns and width of your strips so that you're adding some additional interest and everything isn't matching too much. Okay, now you're going to want to grab your scissors and just some inexpensive peonies from Dollar Tree and I think a couple of them I might have gotten from Dollarama but really any full floral that you like will do fine and you're just going to want to arrange those and a few pieces of greenery and I, I also grabbed a couple of little roses from um, from a bush that I bought from Michael's while on sale at their summer floral clearance and you want to arrange those on your hula hoop on the top and sort of to the left you don't really want it right in the middle you kind of want it off to one side and then using your hot glue gun just put some generous dollops of glue onto the back of each flower and press them into place this just looks uh, so pretty and i cannot believe how realistic these flowers are can i mean can you believe it aren't they just gorgeous Finish it off with a touch of greenery. Here's a little tip. If you're running out of glue gun sticks, stick the new stick on the nozzle to heat it up and then place it in the back and it will adhere itself to the first glue stick, making it a lot easier for the glue just to run through. For this simple yet finicky DIY, you're going to need fabric fusion glue, a paintbrush, your fabric squares, and a small painting canvas. 
cut the fabric squares down to size and then using your glue and a paintbrush put a thin strip on the top of the cloth and then roll your pen inside so that you make a perfect cylinder shape with your fabric and keep doing this until you make enough cylinders to fill up the canvas carefully slide the pen out so that you're left with just the fabric cylinder and then arrange them on the canvas. You're going to want to arrange these in different colors and patterns. I mean, you can do it matchy-matchy if you want, but I think it just looks more interesting if you change things up and have different patterns and colors next to each other. If you need to, sometimes it helps to stick a second pen inside to get it perfectly rounded and uh, straight and then adding a little bit more fabric glue where needed rolling it around and then carefully sliding out the pens now you want to use your hot glue gun and you're going to arrange those fabric cylinders onto the canvas you're going to want to butt these up as close to as possible to each other and again it looks best when you're mixing different patterns and the colors I find it looks I mean, you could do completely different colors if you wanted and get really funky with it. I was going for a little bit more of a neutral look. So all of the colors I decided to go with um, were in the blue and ivory and gray family, but really the choice is yours. You can personalize this to fit your style in any way that you want. And then when you're done adhering everything to the canvas, simply take your scissors and trim the excess fabric as close to the canvas as possible. Okay, this last DIY is definitely the easiest of them all. <laughs> All you're going to need is a picture frame. I had an old wicker one that I found at the thrift store that I painted white and distressed just a little bit. And then I took the lightest color of blue from the um, crafter square. It, it kind of reminds me of water. So I thought that, that that would work really well here. So I just opened up the frame and removed the front part, the plastic. It was ugly and I wasn't going to need it. And then just taking my pinking shears and the cloth, I cut out a square to fit the back of the frame and then hot glued it into place. Now, you could use whatever adhesive you want, but honestly, I found that the hot glue worked just fine. And in a second, you'll see that it just smooths down really nicely and you don't end up with any bunching or, you know, unsightly bits. And then just trim it, the cloth down so that it fits perfectly into the frame. Using your hot glue gun, glue the shell to the fabric and then finishing it off, I just cleaned it up with my tweezers to get rid of any of the extra little glue, glue strings that I didn't want. Well, that's it for today's DIY. Remember, subscribe, hit that notification bell. I hope you got inspired. And if you did, you might get inspired by these ones too. And until I see you next time, keep smiling and DIYing.